Alrighty, folks. Probably it's time to begin. It's me again, your host from Keep Forest, Gleb. And um, we receive a lot of questions about our new library, the Berserk. So we decided that today I will be your live user manual. And today we will look at every function of the library, every knob, every button, and we will go through it. So stra strap your belt and probably let's get started. And um, as you can see, I've prepared a multi with the different types of sounds because some functions are uh, easier to understand uh, with a certain types of sounds. For example, as you can see, now we have our default library. Actually, no, I'm mistaken. The default will be like that. But some people are seeing this library as this mode. And when the step mode is off, the first thing you will think it's not working. No, it still works and it's still synced to your tempo. It just means that now you can, with a start and this is the start marker and this is the end marker, you can define which sample exactly do you want to play. For example, I want to play just this sample. But if I want to play more, I can choose two samples or four samples, for example, As long as it's synced to your host, your DAW, it will play one sample at one bar. You can multiply the tempo or divide it by two. So if we multiply it by two, it will play two times faster. Why we've kept this mode? Uh, if you don't need anything, if you just need a sample that will loop inside your song or something like that, uh, it's the easiest way to use the library. And as you can see, we have not only our step AHD, but an fully fledged ADSR. What this step AHD means, as you can see, if I switch to another key, we have different set of sounds, different start and end markers. And now if I will slow the, slower the attack, with this sample it will work. Attack will be slower, but with the next sample it's still being intact. That's why we have our shortcuts. If you hold Alt and then tweak any parameter, it will be automatically changed for all the samples inside the library. As you can see, every sample has the slow attack. What if we want to return to the default? You can hold control and just click on any parameter within our step AHD. And now, why do you have separate envelopes? Because one of those envelopes control each sample individually. And your main ADSR will control the overall volume of your sound. So for example, as you can see, we have quite a long decay. And now if I will go back to this sample and probably choose just two samples. Yeah. And I will set the long release, but I will set the short hold, short decay. And now when I play the sample, 
now when I release the key. It still plays while my hands are totally free. So if you want to leave a tail on your samples, you need to use a DSR. It will shape your overall volume curve for all the performance. If you want to shape individual samples, you need to use our step AHD. And by the way, I need to tell you one thing. If you forget something or if you just want to take a look at the user manual, we have two buttons in here. The little H button will show you the hotkeys for every control on a dedicated page. So now we see only the main page hotkeys and what will they do to your sound. And if we will click on the question mark, we will see the fully fledged manual with all the information you need to fully grasp the power of this library. Let's get back to the main page and let's probably switch to the step mode because our next topic is our playback styles by the default and why I'm still on whooshes because as you can hear they have the initial whoosh and then they have the hit as the next sample so each time you press a key next sample will be triggered like a b a b and default is a linear mode when all the samples will play one by one in a strict order why i chose the wishes to show you this because for example if we will switch to only odd samples we will have only those And the latter is true for even mode. So with this sound, it's easier to understand what's happening inside those playback styles. For example, if we will choose random, you guess what happened. And the same will be true for shuffle, for example. Shuffle is just another flavor of the randomness. And when you switch to reversed, for example, it will just play your samples from the end of the loop to the beginning. Let's probably switch to another instrument and let it be tribal drums, deep hits. And now you can see that we are in the free mode why is that? Because when you have a one shot inside your instrument, you probably just want to hit a key and it will play until the end from just one hit. We still can use our end marker and our start marker to tweak the sample. And as you can see, the free mode is the only mode that have a random sample start position. Why is that important? Because even if you have just one single one shot, if I will drag this slider, you can see that every time I trigger the <laughs> sample, it will start from a different point. Why is that interesting? Because even if you have just one single hit, you can go to the layering menu. And now 
with this set to tripling, for example. We can tweak the delay slightly, tweak the drift and the width. I will, I will explain everything a little bit later. And we need to utilize pitch drift probably drastically. And now, with just one hit, we can hear something like this. Let me tweak the attack a little bit. And if I switch off the tripling, it will get definitely wider and more interesting than it was before. If we will talk about tripling, the first parameter is delay. Let me probably switch to war drums. And here it will be more prominent. Without it, with the tripling, each time I hit a key, three different samples will be played. And delay determines the static delay between those three samples. So each attack will be slightly after the initial one for 16 milliseconds, for example. So it, it can go from a zero, which will sound not very good, to 200 and this will be a, like a normal delay and everything in between yeah you can do rolls just with a delay and the drift it's the dynamic delay that will constantly offset one sample from another. So as you can see, it goes from zero milliseconds up to 50. And this will be like insane amount of drift. But still kind of usable. I prefer to keep it around probably 20 milliseconds. It will offset your samples plus or minus 20 milliseconds. Width. Width defines the wideness of your stereo image. So if we go almost fully mono, and if we go fully wide, Levels. Levels determine how much of the wide signal versus a uh, central signal you will get. For example, now we will hear only the wide signal. And now we will hear only the central one. And the pitch drift is almost the same as the our delay drift, but it works, as the name implies, with a pitch. It allows samples to constantly drift. It's not that prominent on percussive instruments, but we can go, for example, to the nickel hopper. And now let's go to the tripling and you will hear it come alive. I would not recommend to go fully 100% drifting because it will sound, well, experimental.
but for some purposes it's really cool. But if you just want to make instrument sounds sound bigger, wider, this is a great way to do this. Again, without it. And if we will go to the doubling, as you can see, we no longer have our layer volume control because we still have only two samples. We still have our pitch drift, but no control over the center and the white signal. But we can control it via the width. filter because our filter have two modes low pass and high pass mode and velocity mode and constant mode what will it do let me get back to my war drums for example let's go to the low pass mode and now we can close the filter pretty drastically. And as you can see on the low velocity values, it closes. And on the high velocity values, it becomes more open until on the 100% velocities, it will be fully opened. Yeah, and constant mode will simply close the filter so it will not react to velocities like whatsoever. To talk about the high pass filter, let's go probably to the tambourines because high pass mode is a great tool for the metal instruments actually. Because on high velocity values, the filter will be fully opened. And if I hit a key slightly, it will cut almost all the low, mid, and some high frequency content. Which actually sounds kinda realistic to me personally. So if I will do a simple, very simple sequence, something like this. It will give me it will give me pretty convincing results because it sounds kind of natural and I love it. Next up, I think we need to talk about the stretch mode. And to talk about the stretch mode, let's go to tonal effects. What it does, it allows you to make any instrument playable. Because as you can see, you can define which sample you want to stretch. Nice. I like that one. So if we go, if we will go to the stretch mode, as you can see our sample now. It's 
stretched throughout the whole keyboard. And now you can control the lower note for your playable and the highest note for your playable. And the next thing I want you to know is that it works wonders with a free mode. Because now we can choose a specific area of our sample and it will play only this part. Yep, that's kind of nice. And you can see this F right at the top of the stretch mode. It defines the root node for the sample. So now if I change it, I will hit the same key. So if you want to tune your sample to to the exact same key. You can find this tuning. You can apply tripling in the stretch mode and utilize the random sample start position and it will give you an incredible result. Now you can just go to the high pass filter to tame so some low noises. And you can do that with any instrument from our library. I think it's time to move to our sequencer. And for that, I think I want to get back to our war drums. Uh, you can transpose your samples not only by using the stretch mode, you can transpose it using the dedicated red key switches of your keyboard, actually. So if we will try to do that. I like that sound. Moving forward, let's go to our rhythm tab and let's fully initialize it by pressing the reset all button. Beware, it will reset everything that you've created, so be careful with this knob. And we have our initial basic sequence. And when we talk about our sequencer, the cool thing is each step, by default, each step represents one fourth of your bar. So four steps will be one bar by default. And now using our hotkeys, we can manipulate our sequence pretty easily. For example, if you will hold Alt, it will tweak all the steps inside your sequence at once. If you hold Control, it will control everything through one step. And if you hold Shift, it will tweak only through three steps. So what we can do with this? First of all, we can divide each step to sub-steps. Yeah, let's try and dial in a basic, basic, basic sequence like this. And from starters, let's switch it on your basic sequence. And this is the time when you, we need to talk about the randomized velocity feature because, as the name implies, it will randomize your velocity by a certain percentage plus minus certain percentage. Why I'm getting this 
high now with those values because I want to show you how it actually works. Now each value will be randomized by well 40% for example. And it instantly gives us more motion, more life into our sequences. And uh, to control the speed of the sequencer, we can use the frequency and the tempo. Frequency works with the steps. It determines the time division of your step. As you can see right now, it says one fourth of a bar. And if we go up, we can go up until the 164th triplet. It will be crazy fast, but if you want to go faster, you can do that by simply changing your speed to hertz mode and it will go to 64 hertz. So now we know how to control our sequence with the frequency knob and the tempo will divide your initial tempo by two or multiply your tempo by two. It will sound like this. Nice. And now using the control and click on the tempo, we will get back to our default state. So now it's time to probably make our sequence longer with a step control, which goes from one up to 16 steps, 16 full steps, which means it will be like four bars loop. Let's probably create some sort of a sequence. We have our sequence. And as you can see, we have our ruler, which can define the region that will be played by our sequencer. Now, when we define our playback range, we can simply, if we like it, we can simply crop it. Now we have our two bars. We can press the global copy that will copy all the parameters inside our sequencer. Now we can adjust our steps and just hit paste. And as you can see, it will paste through all the 16 steps. Those two are global copy and global paste. They will work with velocity, panning, filter, pitch, and layers. Next, very neat thing. You can, from starters, flip your sequence on the horizontal axis or on the vertical axis which will give you <laughs> amazing results just in seconds. Now when we have our initial sequence, I think it's time to talk about our individual controls for each sequence lane. And what is the first thing that you want to do to make your sample sound alive? First, yeah, randomize velocity. We've talked about it. But next thing that you want to do is probably hit the copy on the velocity pattern, then go to the filter, engage it, and just press the paste button. And now, as you can see, we have exact same exact same patterns on the filter and velocity tabs. What it allows us to do is it allows us to select from a huge amount of different filters. For now, we will uh, check just the low pass one with a very light slope. And next, you can adjust your filter sensitivity because if we will have it fully 100% sensitive, it will sound sound kind of drastic, I might say.
And as you can hear, as I move the slider down to probably like 40% or something like that, probably even lower, like 25 or 15, it will adjust this movement. Some steps will be quieter and with without so much high content in it. And the next thing that I wanted to show you is that in all this collection of filters, we have some filters that will have additional parameters. So if you click this gear icon, you will see additional resonance and gain. So let's hear how this particular filter sounds. And to be honest, I love effect filters like formant filter and vowel filters because in conjunction with the effects, it probably will sound pretty cool. And now if we just transpose our sample a bit, We've got a completely different sound just from one filter, one sequence, and transposing it higher. Actually, an octave higher. But let's probably, for now, switch back to the low pass filter panning. And as you can see, it's a bipolar sequence because it represents the left and the right and yeah about our hotkeys if you will hold shift and drag any step as you can see it will make changes to the whole sequence at once and if you hit control as you can see it will go through one step and with alt it will alternate each step. By the way, I need to point out that if you're using layering mode, you will not hear anything inside the panning because we all, we've already panned everything hard left, hard right, and at the center at the same time. So to hear the results, we need to go to our default mode. And now, we finally can hear the movement. And what we can do next? We have two lanes that have a bipolar sequences, the pan lane and the page lane. So now, if we want to mimic our pen, we can simply copy it to the pitch again. And be careful, because by default, our pitch is sent to the semitones, set to the semitones. And if you want something really drastic, it will work. But fear not because we have our pitch in scent. And it will just slightly offset your samples like, like this. Still, it's kind of drastic, but to tame it, we can use our slider on the left. It's a dynamic slider. We will talk about dynamics a little bit later, but this slider allows us to tame any of the tabs individually. So as you can see, I can control filter, pitch, and I'm sorry, panning. I can make it more, more prominent or just less prominent. 
and the velocity itself yeah is controllable by this slider also and this slider is independent for each sequence lane first of all we need to talk about our uh, individual reset button it will set any tab that you're at to its default without affecting any others so as you can see we still have our velocity but we have no pan whatsoever right now and what i have to do what i want to do is i want to divide this step to eight sub steps and now how i love to use the pitch i love to set it to sense and then on such a drastic fills i like to do this ramping up or maybe even like this slightly let's start with a fifth step so every time you will create fills like that and if you will utilize the pitch it's a great idea to set it set the ramp up if you want to push it to the next bar or step and if you want to do the opposite it's kind of easy to do actually and also if we talk about pitch we can go to our nickel hoppers again if we will engage the pitch we can stay in semitones and just do something like you can control your samples chromatically if you have a monophonic melody and you just want to control it you can actually do it straight from the page tab without a need to go to any other instruments whatsoever i want to go to the tribal drums again because it's time to talk about layers now let's go to our layers tab because it makes wonders with your sound by an automatic arranger yes sure you can set your doublings and your triplings by hand for each step or sub step it will be okay but most of the times your doubling or tripling will occur on the highest velocity notes most of the times so for that we have our threshold slider and let's set it to probably 80 and hit arrange now as you can see all our velocities above the 80 became doubled let's just compare it will be here 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 looks like a legit result to me and here if you click the gear icon you can see the exact same controls for your layers as you saw on your main page if you didn't use any doubling or tripling on your main page you still can just go here and adjust anything you need to get a great result straight from this tab but the only thing is that you need to set your tripling by hand next thing i want to discuss is our velocity curve because it works 
not with your manual playing. It works with our sequences. And as you tweak it, the grayed outlines will show you the result you will have after you hit the apply button. As you can see, we have our linear curve that just offsets our our velocities in a linear fashion. We have our S-shaped curve, which does an amazing job if you need more dynamics in your patches. Like, okay, let's go for something like this. And now it will sound much better, I think. And as you can see, after you've hit apply button, it now stays on the linear curve again. Brick wall. It just create a wall of sound and the scale curve allows you to scale your, your velocities proportionally. And each time that you're satisfied with your pre-result, you can just hit apply and your result will work wonders. Next thing that I wanted to discuss is our amazing Groove Maker. Here you will see the skip steps function and the go steps function. It's our two sorts of probability. So skip steps, as the name implies, will skip steps or sub steps within a certain velocity range with a certain probability ranging from zero to 100 percent and let's for example switch it on and let's keep all the steps from zero to okay let's go to 30 percent velocity nice huh or maybe we want to get rid of the hardest notes we can do it like this or let's go back to the 0 to 30 and just hit reverse Actually, it skips much more than just the highest ones. And why is it cool? Because, yes, you can just skip some steps and etc. etc. But when you choose something like 20% or 15% it will do much more interesting stuff because it will allow your sequences to constantly evolve to move to change over time and each cycle of your sequence will not be the same now the go steps will do well slightly opposite because it will convert any range of velocities to the ghost notes with the lowest possible velocity so for example let's go for the range from 87 or probably 80 to the 100 with a hundred percent chance and now Or vice versa. If we will go back to our complex rhythms, what we can do with our Groove Maker, except for just skipping steps or converting them to ghost steps, let's do it with the war drums again. Let's go to our Groove Maker 
engage the skip steps and I don't want anything lower than 30% velocities. So now if I hit apply, you can see that we've created completely different rhythm. So for example, I want to skip something in the middle. Yeah. So now you know how to use our skip steps, go steps for many different applications from just spicing up your sequences to completely transforming them just by hitting the apply. Next up, I wanted to show you uh, our sequencing modes. So play all will just by default play your sequence with the key that you pressed. Now, as you can see, I've played four notes, four samples at the same time. And yep, if you ask me, we can use the tripling with it. So now it will play four different loops and simultaneously it will play three samples from each loop. So it will be 12 <laughs> samples at the same time. Let's switch off the layers. Yep. 12 samples at the same time. You can create massive sounds with it, like really massive. Just make the delay higher, drift, pitch drift probably just switch off the low pass on the main page. Yep, and that's just to play all. ARP ascending will play notes in an ascending order. So if I press, for example, three notes like A, C, and E. It will constantly go through all those three notes for, and it will choose the next note for each substep. Arb descending will do the same, but backwards. ARP order will play the notes in the order you pressed them on your keyboard. So let me press more notes. Nice. Next, our advanced mode. And this one is really cool because as you can see, we have eight slots for each step. That means that you can have up to eight different samples playing at the same, eight different loops, I'm sorry, playing at the same time. Let's go to probably five. And now if I will hit all five, you will still hear only one. Now what we can do, we can choose, for example, second and fourth, all five, just third, all five, second, second and fourth, second and, and first, and again, all 
five. And probably, let's be lazy. Let's just copy it and paste. Nope, it doesn't want to do this. Like this, like that. Yep. Yep. And now we will have completely different sequence. More layering, more samples, more mean sounds. And the chords button will simply make those boxes disappear. And if, if you want to clear the step, you can just press C icon at the top of H column. Yeah. Next up is our key sequence. And this is probably the most interesting mode because it allows you to set different keys for different steps. For example, you can engage it <laughs> at first. And now let's do it like this. I will click on the box and hit the key. Click on the box, hit a key. Click and hit, etc. 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 No matter which key you press right now, it will utilize only those that you told our engine to use. Okay, probably it's maybe a little bit too experimental. That's why we can just press shift hold shift click on the first step for example and hit the desired key and now as you can see all our steps are adjusted to this specific key now from that point what i really like to do is i like to set one bar to the one drum and the next bar to the next drum etc etc and for that i can hold shift click on the fifth step and choose c3 and then i can hold shift click on this and a2 again and for the 13th i will hold shift and go for this oh, sorry this for example and now we have our drum convo between four different elements if you're feeling lucky or adventurous or just want to experiment you can randomize the keys for example and as you can see it will keep the relations between your keys so you can test all different possible variations of this example or you can manipulate and randomize the sequence and keys and sequence which will get you new uh, key relations new, new intervals each time those randomization functions inside uh, the velocity sequencer are gold when you need to find something new. Dynamics. Dynamics is essentially a sequencer, an offset sequencer for our sequences. And it works in two modes, in a passive mode and in an active mode. Sorry, active mode. Let's make an example from it. So we've engaged our velocity dynamics and now we want to ramp up from quieter part to our fill 
and then to from choir part again to our fill again and while we are in active mode and we set our sensitivity to the full now when we go back to our sequence we can see that it changed let me switch off the dynamics this is our initial rhythm and when we switch dynamics on again as you can see it offsets all the velocities and as i said we go from the lower sounds to the higher ones um, and if i switch to the passive dynamics for now this rhythm will stay kind of the same the difference between passive and active dynamics is actually that passive dynamics only offsets your sequences and active dynamics transforms them so let me just destroy everything do something like this again just the first steps engage the velocity now we will go to our dynamics we will switch it on we will switch the velocity on we will go to the active mode and fully 100 percent sensitive and now we do something like this like an accurate ramps or signs voila as you can see active dynamics changes our rhythm And if I will switch back to the passive dynamics, the fastest way to dial in some moving sequences is just to create the first steps and then fill it with the dynamics. And it's time to mention one more function. For example, we did something kind of messy and we want to smooth it out. That's when the smooth comes in handy because it makes everything looks pretty and sounds awesome and as you can hear our groove maker and skip steps function and actually the go steps function works with the dynamics as well. I think that's kind of nice. And let me dial back the random velocity. I want to create some sort of a moving, constantly moving pattern. And probably that will spin kind of around your head. We're still in stereo, we still live in stereo, but it may sound kind of cool for that i need pretty pretty sharp sound actually i want to do it like this huh. now i will copy it paste it like this we have our <laughs> tambourine ramps Let's speed it up a little bit. Nice. Now I want to copy it to my filter with the same pattern. And I want to create a panning. Yes. We still keep in mind that pan doesn't work if the layering is engaged. I want to go fully from the left ear to the center to the right and then back like this no not like this I want to go like this
Now, what I actually like to do is I like to engage the velocity. Oh, and you know what we can do else? We can copy the pattern from our pen to our pitch and go to sense and probably adjust it a little bit so it will not sound so drastic. We have our pitch sequence, we don't need layers for now. We have our sequencer, filter <laughs> sequence, pan sequence, and our velocity sequence. And as you can see, we set our dynamics to the brick wall and it will not work at all. Let's make an asynchronous sequences. For example, I want my velocity to go in the passive mode from here to here and now from there and well like that the main trick is to make sequences asynchronous to each other now i want to do kind of the same with a filter but i will go to something like that just a long ramps throughout and if I disengage the filter dynamics our filter looks like that and our filter dynamics looks like this so now we will have kind of cool pattern as you can see we have all those individual uh buttons to copy patterns to uh set them to the default and one more function that i want to talk to you is a random because for example if you just want to experiment or you need some more movement for your patches you can just simply hit the random button voila you will have a pure insanity inside your sequence but fear not everything is repairable because first of all you have your smooth button which will bring it to the order is the first thing and the second thing is that you can offset it with a dynamic slider just keep in mind that it doesn't work when your dynamics is switched on Okay, we have our weirdly moving pattern. Now, um, we can shift our main sequences using the arrows on the left and on the right of our sequencer. So it will move left and right respectively, but only by the whole steps. But if you will hold control, as you can see, it will move by a step subdivisions. One more thing that I wanted to mention, because on our previous stream, we had a question about uneven rhythms. So I want to go to my tribal drums. Or you know what? No, I will go to war drums again. I want to get back to default. And now, while we at one fourth of a bar, I want to do something pretty bizarre because I want to dial in a sequence of fifths. And I want to do it like this. One, two, one, two, three, and next one, two, three, one two copy to the filter and we have our uneven sequence and if we make it slower
you got the idea and i highly recommend you to try this out with our war drums or with our tribal drums because those rhythms those are un uneven rhythms like seven rhythms for example like one two one two three mm, one two one two three one two three four will give an amazing very tense result so definitely give it a shot you will not be disappointed by the results and we really love that our sequencer can go to the uneven territories like easily next one we've talked about dynamics we've talked about everything in here let me go back probably to four steps again and check this probably let's make our random panning just in case and let's go to the passive not very sensitive dynamics with a ramp up nice yep and switch it switch it on and let's make some layering again okay it will suffice because now what I want to discuss with you is our rhythm browser. And first of all, as I said, as I've said on our previous streams, we had we had a huge amount of rhythms. As you can see, there is four thousand five hundred forty-six rhythms, and it would be kind of clunky and kind of sad to try to navigate all this collection that's why we've created our categories our folders some of them are dedicated to certain instruments as you can see hits are mainly for hits and impacts we have uh, different kicks snares claps that are packed in different categories we have dedicated shaman drums word drums which works wonders with word drums and some more miscellaneous categories like percussions plucked strings which are actually pulses we have cycles and talking about the uneven rhythms we even have a dedicated folder which called um, signatures and it contains all the uneven fifths rhythm or seventh definitely check it out also we have polyrhythms that can go to any category so but it's still a lot as you can see it's a long list of everything that's why we developed a filtering so you can go for triplets and now you will see only triplet categories or just straight rhythms and you will see only the straight folders or you can go both and see everything as it is and just in a few minutes you will understand why is it so important for example let's go back to the straight menus <clears throat> and now we will go for the war drums and as you can see the first button I want to discuss the first switch I want to discuss in here is our load rhythm only it allows you to load as the name implies load rhythm only because each rhythm preset will have velocity tab filter tab panning tab and probably even layers tab filled with some info and if load rhythm only is switched off each time you created something within your sequencer when you will load in your rhythm it will be lost completely unless you saved it so as we remember we've dialed in some dynamics we've dialed in a filter a panning a layering but now we want to go for something different just because we can so we can go for the war drums complex 
and we can hit any rhythm as you can see something like this will appear and let's go for the 16th steps and I'm oh, sorry copy this up here yep and now we have our war drums complex pattern but with all the previous parameters that we've dialed in this way if you found a formula that you need to to make all the rhythms sound together you can have it you can save it you can <laughs> you can save it from a destruction by loading new rhythm because now if i will turn the low rhythm only off and load something new as you can see we have new dynamics new filtering new layers without panning without anything so uh it's very important to keep an eye on your load rhythm only switch because you might need it next we have a construct random button and for this example i want to first of all i want to play this sequence because i think it might sound cool with the war drums okay it sounds decent so now as we remember we have our markers that can define a portion of our sequence so let's select the seventh and the eighth steps and let's say we wanna fill for example we can go to fills actually let's go for the triplet fills you know yeah we will go to the fills just load the folder itself and now we can construct a random fill don't ask me about this again boom and construct it again and probably again and now you will have the straight rhythm with a dedicated triplet fill and now probably let's let's do something similar here but we will go to the triplet war drums well okay not the best example but still you get the idea what i wanted to point out is as you can see those three bricks represents our construct random and what this function does it analyzes all the rhythms inside the specific folder like war drums or main drums for example and it will analyze all the rhythm and create construct a new completely new rhythm for you in just one click it will do it with a straight with a triplet rhythms and the trick is if you will hit both rhythms it will try to construct you a new really unexpected rhythm from the both straight and triplet rhythms those arrows those randomized arrows uh, symbolizes pick random so when you want to just find something to start with you can go for probably okay you think just probably okay i want to go to well main drums triplets for example and i want i don't want just rhythm i want everything and i don't know what i want because there's plenty of everything so i just hit pick random for me please and then if I want oh, sorry, to pick another one, I can hit it again. And if I hit it again,
you can construct just a part of the rhythm. You can, sorry, <laughs> wrong button. You can change any part of the rhythm you want. Let's go back to our medieval percussions. I will probably switch the dynamics off. I need just my patch, my filter, panning, and velocity. And now we can create exceptional drum grooves with a randomized velocity slider and humanizer because low values will give you just some movement, but the high values are the golden. So, for example, let's engage the skip steps to some degree. For example, well, 28%. Let's engage ghost steps, just 15 or 16 percent, probably. And now let's crank the humanizer, like really hard. If you use Humanizer by a certain degree, it will give you so much this human feelings to your sounds, to your sequences, because it will shift every step or sub-step, and it is so amazing. So back to our sequencer, oh, sorry, <laughs> our browser. As with all browsers, you can save your patches if you create something something really interesting. So yeah, just like very drunk drummer. And now you can find it in the user menu, as you can see. And if you're going to use it really often, you can just star it, go to all categories, and now you can find your preset in the favorites. Let me go back to my war drums or even no, for tribal one. Yeah, tribals, as we remember, those are really deep hits. And as you can hear, those hits are really long ones. And if we will dial some busy sequences, tails of the samples will clash with each other all the time. So if I will engage it, yeah, your tails will clash with each other and it might become a problem in a very busy mix it might become a problem in any circumstances. That's why we have a retrigger function and we have retrigger with two modes. In the first mode, retrigger will cut the tail of the sample at the beginning of our next sample. So we, hear, uh, we see here this low velocity third sample and then a pause so it means that this sample will sound during that pause and will be cut only at the beginning of this fifth step. But if we will engage the second mode, it will cut the tails of the sample at the beginning of the next step or sub-step. That means that this tiny little step will be fully choked at the beginning of the next sub-step. So with the full chokes, with a cut in the beginning of the next sub-step, at the beginning of the next sub-step, it will sound like this. And with the tails, 
until the next sample. We can hear that now it sounds more loose, more free, but still not that muddy as if we switch the retrigger completely off. So, and the next thing I wanted to discuss with you is our play once button. And for that, I want to go to the tribal shouts. And just to show you what I mean by that, let me just disengage everything. And we have our different shouts that are pretty cool, but what we can do, uh, actually, first of all, we can do um, massive shouts, like really, really big crowds, just with a sequencer. What do we need to do for that? We need to engage our velocity, we need to go to the sound design, and actually, uh, as you can see, we have massive impacts, massive claps, and okay, Let's use massive claps as an example. So, this is a short, short burst uh, sequences, but in order for them to work properly, uh, actually, this is our default state of the sequencer. We need to go A from the sync mode to the hertz mode. This is the first one. And then we need to engage the play once button because it will stop the, the sequencer after the first circle. So you will get only the one shot at the end of the day. So the next, uh, next thing I wanna do actually is to engage our key sequence. So we will have different samples on different steps. And after that, I want blindly randomize both keys and sequence. And after that, I want to go to the pan and I want to randomize the panning. It will give us an illusion that many people shout from different directions, actually. Let's tame it just a little bit. And let's check what's with our... Yeah, and what I like to do next is to add some uh, convolution with some cathedral. And let's listen to this. And with a different rhythm preset. What we can do to push it even further? We can introduce some pitching. Well, for starters, yeah, okay, let's experiment with semitones, but not too hard, not like this. Something slightly different from the original. It's like many orcs shout at the same time. But if we go to sense, and probably you will randomize those and make it more prominent, it will sound really, really cool. And then we can go a little faster. Just for a comparison, let's switch the sequencer off and just recollect how the how the individual shouts sound like. And now
And I really think that this feature is really awesome. And again, if we go back to the semitones, even just some pass by sound effects will sound really cool. I really love it. It's beautiful. By the same principle, you can create anything. Stomps, hits, impacts, uh, incredible war drum, rolls, claps, even. And one more trick that I wanted to show to you. And I want probably a few more different drums, like crunch, and maybe, well, let's do everything really massive. Let's go for a massive crunch as well. Come on. Yep. The first thing is we need to assign them to the same channel by opening this MIDI channel menu and selecting the first channel. Now they will all sound at the same time. I promise that we will cover the KSP uh, script later, but I will give you just, just a taste what you need to expect from the next live stream. Because if we go back to velocities, if we... If you make everything like a default, yep, everything is in a default state. And now we will do a little neat trick. So now all of them together sound like this. It's much more interesting sound than it was before. Much, it has like more character, more impact to it. So now, what we want to do? We want to select just one step, just one single step. And now we want to engage our play once button. We don't need retrigger at all, so we will disengage it everywhere. We need to switch our velocities on and go to our key sequence mode and, and engage it. And you know what, we need just one step for that. Remember, uh, play once stops the cycle after it ends. So now, disengage, retrigger, velocity, just one step, key sequence, engage. And again, one step, velocity, play once, key sequence, engage. And now, yeah, we need a step in, in here. Now, uh, we can manipulate our sounds just by simply changing keys within each patch. And by the way, while we're here in the sequence mode, as you can see, we have those little arrows that allows us to transpose single step to a different key. Sorry, not transpose, just change a sample, change a key effects. First of all, we have a huge library of different effects, of different saturation stomps, uh, all the modulation stomps, delays, reverbs. Uh, we cre we've created a custom uh, convolution collection for you. Uh, everything from um, reverbs to individual uh, EQ responses. And to load an effect, you just hit the plus in 
any uh, slot. And choose what you like to load. As you can see by default, we have some effects chains uh, prepared for each instrument that will uh, slightly change their sounds. For example, if we go to those board drums, this is with 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 effects, and this is without them. Again, without them. We have a collection of presets for each kind of instruments. Like you can see, 49 different effects chains, which will uh, make particular instruments sound particular way. Okay, let's let's just for the sake of the experiment, let's go to the nasty factor, for example. I like it. It sounds cool. And uh, as long as the order matters, if you want to tweak your sounds, if you want to tweak your samples, you can easily rearrange all the stom stomps just by dragging them to a certain point. I, I, I don't know what I did here, but... Well... And again, if you created something that you're happy with, you can click the icon and save the preset. And uh, if you're just feeling lucky or adventurous, again, you can hit the pick random preset and our engine will decide that probably you want something like compress me gently. Or, I don't know, loud and hard with a convolution. And as you can see, each of our FX stomps uh, have dedicated controls for almost everything. For now, that's it. Almost good night for me and a good day or a good evening or a good morning to you all people around the world. See ya.